Lols and lols. Hello and welcome to the Vegan Stephen podcast. All characters and events in this show, even though it's based on real people, are entirely fictional. All type of voice are impersonated to party. The following program today is going to line with with content should not be viewed by viewed by anyone. Today we're going to talk about. Yesterday was Indian border dispute, and today is not our wasps like humans. That's that later on. Today we're going to have a little look at the increase. Indirect provision allowance. Oh my word. Controversial. Uh, <laughs> <it happens. laughs> Alright, let's have a little look. Direct provision. Uh, 9th of October. Today, the government announced the increase in weekly payment for adults and children living in direct provision. This weekend increase brings the allowance up to the recommended amount of 2015 with the McCann Group report from 12, sorry, 2160. So they were getting 21 euro 60 and now it's up to 38.80 for adults and 29.80 for children. All right, so this is something to do with refugees coming to Ireland, I believe. Uh, so I keep getting emails about it. I'm not, it's not really fascinating, I'm just going to be honest with you, it's a bit boring, but people seem to be really flipping interested about it for some reason, so, here we go. The system can be criticised, but this is uh, Wikipedia. Why is direct vision bad? Oh jeepers. The system can be criticised for human rights organisations as illegal. Has been, okay. Inhumane and degrading, while propagandists argue that it ensures asylum seekers are housed. That's karma from from giving out. Uh, Are housed and cared for in accordance with international law. All right. Uh, How much do asylum seekers get a week? I think we already talked about that. Wonderful. Okay. What is a refugee entitled to in Ireland? A refugee will have the same rights. This is know your rights, Dada. A refugee will have the same rights in America as Irish citizens who look for work and get a job. And access to education, training, medical care, social protections. And services. While a refugee, you are entitled to be issued with an Irish tra- travel document to leave Ireland and re-enter the country. All right. So that's just some general little bits of waffle, and now we can get into um, some people giving out socks for and against it. Okay. So what are we getting into here? Alright, so just. Scooby boop boop boo. Know your vision, direct provision. Alright, Alright. so we're gonna have a. I think we had a look at this article already. We have a look at this article. But it's about the direct provision. It's the most recent one. Excuse me. I can find. Uh, Give an inch and they'll take a mile, says serious, no joke. Uh, Now that's out of context, in fairness. Sean Bradley says these pirate operators have no constriction for human life, consideration for human life. So, uh, where for reference to these comments was, the department asks the Refs Provision Centre owners to provide living conditions. Allegations are clearly false. So, there was, people were saying the living conditions weren't up to scratch. And so on. Let's see, we had some direct, okay, let's get on Reddit. I think we'll find some people giving out about it there. Or maybe people saying how great it is. Let's find out. Genuine question about Direct Provision Ireland. Wonderful. Now, okay, so I open up two little articles here. Ooh. 
You know what's gone wrong when you drop the bone. Oh yeah. The pitter patter of ice cubes being put back in a bone. Allegedly. Oh no, maybe so. All right, we're getting back into direct provision centers, so stay put. There must be nothing more disgusting than having someone blowing their nose in your ear and like HD sound. <laughs> uh, must absolutely sound disgusting someone there. Okay, so let's have a little look at this date here. We're gonna use the magical tools of, of technology. I feel very old, I'm ready to call a son in, my son in here or something. After nine years of direct provision, grand. Oh, that was it. Okay, good, good, sorry. Alright. Oh, this is the button here. Oh, someone's at the door. So I get the vibe that <clears throat> some people are like, oh, you know, they 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 have it so good or something. Um, they're trying to steal our jobs and our women and all these things. Um, I'm not saying there's any truth to any of that. Oh, jeez. Uh, you'd be hearing people having all kinds of, shouting all kinds of things. Alright, so here's a little thing on Reddit. It says, after nine years in direct provision, I have never stopped living. Uh, uh, I don't know where this is going. This is... This is... Alright, let's find out. I haven't read the details, but is she still in direct provision? If so... Is she really the best candidate to know about local issues? Damn. Yeah, next comment. Yeah, she's living in direct provision sandwiched between the M50 and farms in North County City Centre. Okay, so can I see her article here? Do 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 Here's some other little things. <clears throat> Whatever way you feel about asylum seekers, is the next comment, immigration, etc. It's absolutely ridiculous that we have people in direct provision for this long. The appeal system is way too slow and we need something done to sort these people. Oh, he said these people. Oh, he's in trouble. This is uh, Erico 1D. All right. Uh, these people, he says, oh, he's very bold, out quicker, out quicker one way or the other. Uh, okay, so that's something he's saying there. Next lad says, this is from Mr. Abigation or something. So I think they're taking into question that someone, um, abuse perhaps in the system. I don't know. Abuse of the system? Who knows? Random comments on Reddit. Could be written by anyone. Exactly. Genuine cases need to be, get sorted out so they can move on with their lives and the chancers need to F off. Slowly the process, slowing the process down isn't keeping people from coming so speed it up, keep pace. Jeepers. Okay, so perhaps they're concerned about uh, people abusing the system there. Um. Alright, let's see what else we're getting on here. Uh, what are the bottlenecks in the process? asks one guy. Let's maybe have a little look at that. Open it up in another time. Let's see how we're getting on here. Make sure you get all that lovely merch there below, people. Um, okay, so 
here's some of the bottleneck issues allegedly involved. Never unlimited appeals, near sorry, NEA or near unlimited repeals, says Mr. Emerald. Appeals and solicitors effing around, not presenting evidence or lying. Jeepers. So that's the accusation, I guess. Okay. So that's one guy's opinion there. It's absolutely mad that it could be anywhere of that. It's, it's all right. So this is an Irish Times article. It's it's called it's the Irish Times. It's a famous enough thing. The name of the article is it's February two thousand and nineteen. Second, after nine years in direct provision, I have never stopped living. Says a uh, a lady there. And um, just see if there's any little highlights for you. Okay, we have some comments here. Okay. So I think you get the idea uh, of the article. Let's see what she was saying there. Do, do, do. There are two versions of the story. Ellie Kanau Penobi came to be first f uh, female asylum seeker to stand for local election in Ireland. I'm already completely baffled. Can you come to Ireland to run elections? All right. Fair play to her, ambitious. No, no, she's, I'd be scared going, she's, ah, yeah, sure, fuck, fair play to her. And short version of that is, after many conversations about politics and society, her friend Gary Cannon, a social democrat councillor, suggested it to her at the Christmas party in 2019. He saw something in me, he calls me our mayor. Okay, so it keeps going into the story and lovely stuff. So, um, there she is. Uh, and the people, see, they like her and stuff, they're saying there's a portrait of her there uh, in Dublin City Council culture. Uh, company's local heroes. So, there you are. She fizzes with energy, they say. Wonderful. So a nice happy story there. Okay, let's see what else we got going on here. Bum, 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 ba, da, da. Uh, she says, at the United Against Racism rally in 2016. So she's just there. Brilliant. What's say, end something? End direct provision. Oh, okay, so as I said, uh, apologies, I, I've, this is, I've only heard the word direct provision like five times in my life, so uh, it's it's obviously a big issue for some people, so here you are. Okay, comments is now closed for the story, okay, okay, okay. so here's the first, the old comment. Uh, okay. I've never read comments from the, <laughs> the Irish Times, so we'll see what happens. Jeepers. So this isn't, I'm not really talking about facts here, I'm talking about feelings, I'd say. But who knows, hmm? Direct Vision Centre needs a full overhaul, initially described as an interim INTURIM system, which would provide accommodation for a six month period. Individuals and families are trapped in the system for years. Um, discrepancies in the level of independence provided from centre to centre combined with the meagre weekly allowance in de degrading is unfair. Increase their rights and ensure time bound cap of two years to make direct sorry decision on their application extended by one additional year to deal with appeals. So there's one guy, and there we have our responses. Okay. Anthony Wise, I've got, jeez, says, man, you are of course correct. Also fear you are being unrealistic. Asylum applications are normally dealt with quite quickly in all circumstances and were refused at first instance. Legally aided 
appeal can be dealt with pretty much as soon as the applicant and his or her legal advisors are ready for the process. These extensions, of course, where relevant country of origin information takes time to obtain, where applicants go to ground for periods. Go to ground for periods. Or where... Keep going, keep going. All right, she's, I think she's quoting, she's quoting the entire law book there, but look, but the comment just keeps going. Fucking Christ. Are we going to keep reading it? Right, I think we get the idea. Alright. Lovely. So, is every comment a mile long here? No, okay. Lovely. So, left of the right centre, oh dear, has this comment to say. She comments, this country has let her down. Jeepers. Unbelievably. Um, absolute, absolute un-effing believable. Oh shit. I don't know where this person's going. What, what, where's this person going? This country with... Okay, I think she's talking about Ireland. She was, yeah. It's a bit confusing because it's irishtimes.com but so I'm like, is that the American Irish Times? Which makes no sense. So it just must be at Irish Times and they're trying to look all fancy and have a .com instead of a .e or something. Who knows? I'm throwing shade. I'm a big old shade tree. Alright, let's, let's keep going. So this person seems to be giving out stick. She's... Uh, I'm enjoying how I automatically assumed it was a woman. <laughs> All right. Anyway, here we go. This country with whom she has no connection has taken her, given her shelter, food, clothing, medical care, money. She is educating her children in third level education and allowing her to participate in her own domestic elections. Democratic. For the taxes we've paid to provide all this to her, we are accused of letting her down. There's ingratitude. Jeepers. And we've got a keyboard warrior here. There's ingratitude and then there's just plain taking the piss. Oh, jeez. Piss is spelled P1. The number one with SS, in case you're wondering. How much more taxes exactly am I supposed to pay to rent her in the manner she wishes? To pay... Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So that's someone's opinion there. And jeepers, they write this, they have to write another big. Alright, lovely. Anthony Wise chimes back and he says, Unfo in response to that comment, he says, Unfortunately, Ireland has chosen by people who know they are unlikely to merit refugee status, not because their application for asylum or protection are more likely to be granted here, but because of the small likelihood when refugee when refused refugee status on the merits of lack therefore of of their case, they will automatically be deported because of the almost limitless opportunities available to frustrate deportation by talking serial in, taking serial in judicial law re reviews. Lip. All right. Uh, did anyone? Did anyone understand that? Okay. And they keep going on. Uh, different lads are just shouting at each other here. Uh, Jeeves says, according to the UNHCR, there are sixty-eight. Jeeves. So, yeah, they're 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 having. Two bits there, a few opinions, for and against, I guess. And do 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 
here's uh, another response to that article. So, I often think that journalists who write stories like these are peddling some sort of propaganda. I think that they don't want to realise that they aren't really any unditious... U-N-D-E-C-I-D-E-S Undecades on this topic. This there either confirming on the basis of people who think that Ireland should let the people in or in raving enraging the people who think they should be kept out it's like it's giving both sides what they want to hear okay, so that comment was from Euclid and Dublin 2001 says, well, duh, otherwise you'd be dead. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next comment uh, says, all right, wonderful. Uh, pragmatically, the direct provision centre system is a bit of a political fuck up in my opinion the bleeding hearts don't like it because it's degrading of your average Irish conservative me fame type doesn't like them because they don't want to hear centres set up near where they live jeepers they live and they hate that the accommodation has Wi-Fi, heating, etc. Likes. Alright. And the person goes on to say, this is, once again, uh, the Reddit response to the art, that article, nine years under a direct provision of someone's um, experience with it. For these reasons, I don't really understand why they don't let asylums live privately wherever they want and work. Vet, vet, vet them and require them to check in with the guardie once a month or whatever. If you want, but the result of this would be that most would settle in the cities, Dublin, where their neighbours would give less of a shite. That's a quote, that's a uh, Versus certain twitcher, small town rural Ireland and you and you'd dispense with the political cost we are spending on X on these centres we need to look after our own jeepers so it possibly suggesting that uh, people don't want them in their own sm in small towns but they're getting away with it in cities or something like that. Who knows? Sure, let me know what you got out of that. Uh, whatever it goes on to say, you'd save money or it doesn't actually matter. Presumably, you'd be spending and saving on vet vetting, monitoring and intelligence, admin, etc. And people who think the centres are degrading would be happy they're gone. Okay. So that's his solution there. Uh, this is quite a controversial topic, so um, people have varying opinions on, on the thing, so just comment below and uh, I've, I'm have i hopefully not getting involved, I'm just going to read some comments and see how we get on. Uh, Johnny Harballs says, so despite their only right to say stay in the country being have their asylum claim determined they should have the same rights as you or me so that's the question that would pull factor and would encourage more asylum seekers who would also want social welfare considerations and obviously we have a bit of housing crisis about 700 people in direct provisions have remained there even though they're 
they have a permission to reside in the country can move wherever they like to work or claim social welfare. HAP um, all caps if they choose. They claim they can't find anywhere to live. Asylum seekers also need to support systems in place to assist in things like getting their kids into schools if they are if they sp spread out willy nilly then it would be harder to ensure those needs are assistance to, are received for it. asylum seekers are permitted to work if they have been waiting for more than nine months for a first incident decision which is fair enough only one waiting around for years are those who have been refused international protection previously and are judically J U D I C A L L Y Judaically reviewing decisions made against them. If successful that gives them another go at it. Um, uh, uh, right, okay. So, uh, yeah, I don't know who... I don't know who this lad is, but... That's who he's claiming, anyway. Okie dokie. Do 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 Lovely. Uh, next comment says, What kind of insane system keeps people in direct provision centres that long? When you've lied here, lived here, for nine years, it should be a simple matter of assessing whether you are a threat or not and then letting you live your life or deporting you. Says one commenter. Uh, the next comment says, Yeah, fuck illegal immigration and all those effing idiots um, coming her legally, coming here legally. We need to help the people who have broken the law. Says one commenter. Um, and finally, yeah, I think, this is by Eric 1D, says, yeah, I think we need some sort of, uh, a, a, what's that called, assignment, a semestry, um, amnesty, fucking chuffed myself getting that word, amnesty for people in long term DP, DP being direct provision. With, as they say, check that they are not up to. So there's some paranoia involved. Oh yeah, sure, who knows? Who knows? Um, with, as you say, check that they are not dangerous, including, um, etc. It would be unpopular with a lot of people, but it would let us get the system under control instead of struggling with this intense backlog would probably cost less in the long run. Okay. So there's some opinions by some people on the Irish Reddit. Uh, some of them could be in the government, some could be just like, I don't know, some, some random people just ranting and raving on the internet. I don't know who they are. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's the joy of of life. Alright. One lad says uh, the alternative is to do what the UK does, build detention centres at airports and detain this is from Mark Powell. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be contra. This is what one lad says. 
uh, build detention centres at the airports and detain them here. Listen to claim their claim, which in 99% of cases will be fraudulent, and deport them. Okay. There is too much political correctness in this country, he says, in that anyone who suggests these people... Oh, he said these people. Oh, no! He's... No matter what you say, as soon as you drop it, these people... You're finished. You're gone. <laughs> Masquerading as asylum seekers is labelled as... Labelled a racist. No Greenwich being a perfect example. Only... 15% first-time decisions on asylum applications in Ireland were rejected. Okay, that's a quote by the Irish Examiner. Uh, Ireland has the lowest uh, refusal rate of asylum applicants. Okay, Irish Examiner. There you are. Seems like a small percentage could be mm, masquerading. Mis M A S Q U or A I D I N G. Rather, having few masqueraders then sends genuine people back to be killed or worse. And then the next comment is, "You're obviously a racist." So, the, well, some people weren't happy with what he had to say there. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um. Here's another lad. Feminist, fem, female communist has this to say. Oh god. We're in for, we're in for a treat. Okay, here we go. Uh, f feminist communist says. One, th one thing I'm highly suspicious of is profit motive for direct vision operators, that the biggest problem, the companies running the DP centralized C-E-N-T-R-E-S, have every motivation to skimp on every service they provide. Because they know how the government will keep throwing money at them, regardless of how badly they treat refugees. Sufficient season says uh, one of the hotelers involved, Mark. Oh, uh, allegedly, I'll put allegedly in there. Marcus White alleges this person was once convicted of illegally employing migrant workers, a total disgrace. Um, so. One lad wasn't playing by the rules there or something. Um, D. Scally McNack says, Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't the majority of those DP asylum seekers and they are only considered refugees once their asylum application is granted? Okay. And here's another lad, Namexo, says, Of course, there's no easy answers, but there's... A Parent room for improvement. Housing for all the money being spent on the conventional hotel and B&B accommodations, it would be sensible to, he lists off, oh, he lists off a list of suggestions. Alright, let's see what he has to say. Um, For, for all uh, money being spent and that, yeah, okay. Here's the first point. Uh, use only locations with convenient access to direct transport, one day round trip for services and appointments that the residents by nature of their status require. Next point he says, provide shared kitchens so that residents can cook to their own taste and eat when they like. 
Um, the next point, exclude extremely rural locations with very small villages uh, from consideration in addition to transport issue mentioned above. It is an imposition to argument a village population 50% uh, more with refugees. I can see people jumping on this as racist. It's not, he says, claims. People might object to any group of people overwhelming their village. Hipsters, Hawaiians, Canadians, punk rockers, Elvis, impersonators, etc. All right. Next one. Uh, permit the preservation of families and personal relationships. Often refugees are very suddenly relocated without regard for these matters. Okay, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, or okay. Social welfare is another little thing he says. This is already a social welfare program in effect. The money is being well spent. It could be spent better to have Ireland opt out altogether for accepting refugees is a separate question. Work permits through though issue having numbers though issue having numbers of people introduced to a community without opportunity for constructive use of their time day after day is a poor result result though if you are going to welcome adults into our community such country we might we might they deserve opportunity to become employed and seek education? The number of refugees is not a, a, so large that we would have a significantly sufficient impact on overall employment for the country. Oh damn. Again, points are based on given that the decision to host refugees is already made. If that be so, then dignity ought to be part of the bargain and the response to that is they all seem like very reasonable suggestions okay so that is a little bit about direct provisions um it's a nurse yeah she it's a it's a, it's a hot potato um and for some reason, I guess it, for, for people involved it's very obvious, but I, I wasn't aware of it. Um, direct provision centres were big, in Ireland anyway, um, there was direct provision signs and so on in the Black Lives Matter protests. So it was, this direct provision movement was linked with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, so that's how in some, either intentionally or not, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, I didn't really do any research. <laughs> but yeah, you just you just hear people talking on the bus, and you're like, "What? What are they talking about?" So I just thought I'd give it a, a Google, so you could see some varying different opinions on the subject. Um, it is something that's going on, and people are uh, feel very passionate one way or the other way. About it, so there you are. Du -du -du -du. Okay, so it seems like people have a fear of abuse of the system, um, and in rural areas, they're afraid that there'll be more asylum seekers than local people. Because I think it's something to do with that there's if there's only like 80 people in the town and you're bringing 40 people in uh, they feel I guess they feel I don't know they'd be outnumbered or something I don't they have a lot of feelings about it and there's been protests up and down the country about direct provision centres for various reasons but you might have to use your 
mind to figure out because they're, often they're protesting one thing but it's because they really want this another thing but the you know, sorry. strategical protesting perhaps who knows who knows who pays direct provision in Ireland okay this is by ria.gov.ie so it must be an old government thing uh, let's see our pay directly from the state personal allowance gives the money yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So if you think that number is low, I described this yesterday. The I think the accommodate the the accommodation and stuff is paid for and the food or something like that, and that's like money on top or something like that. So it's no money to live on. But the claim that I think the state are making is that they're saying everything else is paid for. They're getting Wi-Fi and all the rest. So I don't know. I guess that's a counter argument or something like that. And here's another little bit on the Irish Times as well. Mm, darling, 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 do you like direct provision, do you? <coughs> Nearly 5,500 asylum seekers to be housed in new direct provision centres across Ireland. Grand. Uh, Irish Times, lovely. The government is planning uh, to, to house nearly f that meant number of people. Uh, it'll cost more than 320 million over coming years. So, uh, I guess because of human nature, a human would see that and be like, someone else, who, someone who is not me, is getting 320 million. And they're like, probably looking at their, their own house and just being like, oh, well, why am I getting that or something? Um, I'm just guessing why people are uh, annoyed. Um, uh, who knows? Who knows? Tender documents show Department of Justice is seeking provisions to operate centuries ahead of regions covering the 26 counties. And it just goes on. Okay. Lovely. Do, 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 do. Um. So asylum seekers uh, uh, applications were the most in 2012 and now they're like half of that number, thousand, oh, sorry, 1002 was 11,000 and 2019 was 3,000 so it's gone down for like a low as like applications anyway. So I don't know, big improvement I guess. I was looking at a chart here, it says uh da, 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 da. when's the last time it was this low? It says it was just three thousand. So we're at the same number we are now as uh nineteen ninety seven we had the same number of applicants, around the three thousand mark. And it all peaked around two thousand and two. So I ended up when I went down. So around 2002, we were up, we were up around the 11,000 applicants mark there. I've no idea what happened. Tell you those applications or whatever. There you are. And lovely. Direct provisions. It's a decision. Hmm. <laughs> Expensive, the suicide cover up, the government's corrupt, GPC money pushing drugs on me. When you're sensitive and it's legal, start to say no to billboards being irresponsible, selling emotional escape, gambling alcohol and vape, and it's all okay if it's taxable. I just want to stay here like some.
function Wake your ass up The hypocrites profit from the sick Trapped in a horror flick I've lost all perspective Rolling around a bag Crying holding my head Can't afford real help Smoke weed instead This is master's degree I can't afford your overcharging fees I wanna stay clean with CBT Trying to avoid a cycle of heroin in prison And all you wanna give me is a prescription addiction I just wanna stay everyone stressful situation for everyone involved um fuck man you can't you can't keep everyone happy in the jeez yeah yeah it's an awkward one hopefully someone will some smart smart lad <laughs> or woman will uh sort it all out and all the rest of it would be grand <laughs> uh, information COVID 19 refugee. Okay, 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 okay. Lovely. Yeah. Alright, so hopefully that sorts one or two things out because uh, there was, I think someone, one or two people listed a fact or two, you know, and it put some, some opinions that people may have on the internet because there's a certain amount of an- anonymity or whatever because it's often hard to, to realise. Uh, why, like, why things are happening? Like concealed motives and um, possible racist undertones and just all sorts of things. Bit, bit more. Things are a bit more subtle than you'd expect, I guess. Um. Like in the mob, they send your friend to kill you. It's fucking true. Send your friend to kill you. Um, she said, oh, this, this just got dark. But, um, in gangs and stuff, yeah, they, they go to your mate and they go, listen, we're going to kill your, your best mate. Look, do you want to you wanna get two grand out of it or do you want someone who's going to fuck up the job and make it painful for him? And they're like, fuck, well, he's going to get killed anyway. Might as well get two grand. And then the the assassin or whatever shows up to the mother's funeral. And anyway, uh, guess what I'm saying is, <laughs> ah yeah, sure. I think some of it was hinted there subtly. There's there's a lot of different intentions and agendas kind of hidden there subtly and stuff. And all sorts of good stuff. And um, there's something else I want to talk about. Wasps. <laughs> Uh, wasps, uh, farming. See, I'm, I'm a bit fascinated with wasps right now because they're, they're, they have so many habits just like humans. For example, they farm livestock. I think it's larvae. They. That's oh, ants. Ants farming. Worker ants have strong jaws designed to clip off parts of plants. Um. Oh 
it. So if an ant meets another ant on the road, like, they'll fucking... If it's a local ant, if it's off a neighbour in local town, it will fucking fight to the death and just fucking right there. If it's a local one, because that means it's like a, an, a from a, it's competition for food and all this stuff. But if the ant is from a, a colony that is from like a few counties away or just like from much further away and isn't a local threat, um, the ant. I know it's from watching those David Attenborough. <laughs> The ant will uh, just go like here, I'm starving, give me some food there. And the other ant, um, they'll like, like grapple it into submission or something and they just go, oh, just give it some food or something. They'll give it food and all the rest of it and they'll be all mates with it. But if it's a local, just think about like co countries fight with their neighbours and they fucking hate the local country beside them because usually like there's some kind of invasion or war between the local country. But if it's from a different person from a different, further away country that the two countries have no historical war connection with, they'll just be oh come on in, I'm sure we'll have some vodka together, no worries. Um, it's just, it's very like people. Um, yeah. Very I'm fascinated by these fucking, uh, this, all the different things going on with ants. Um, oh, right, here's the picture of it. So ants, they farm these fucking, what do they farm, I can't read. Ant farm, insect cowboys. <laughs> they farm these little uh, fucking aphoids, what are they called, aphoids? Aphids, A-P-H-I-D, an aphid, which is like a little thing that lives on fucking grass or something. But they like provide it protection and it's fucking wild like. They fucking farm like livestock. Do you know what I mean? They tend to the fucking livestock. Isn't that fucking insane? Ants have fucking livestock. They fight local neighbouring things and yeah. They take either twenty percent of the, the world's fucking uh, like population or whatever. It's fucking ants. Just Fucking wild. Um, yeah. So, just thought I'd share that with you. Because <laughs> it's, it's ants blowing my mind, man. Ants blowing my mind. Absolutely mental looking lads. And they're like proper, t t uh, was it? They're like proper T Rexes. They can't see if you're, <laughs> unless you're moving. <laughs> Uh, for, for any of you guys who, um, oh yes, finally on this show, I want to look up the definition of Alcan's Razor. I know I'm mispronouncing it, but I can't figure out how to fucking say it, so I'm going to look up the definition of that, and that'll be the end of the show, okay? So I hope you enjoyed. Today, I'm delighted to be here with you. The time is 2018, that's 2818 or something like that, and the time and all that is... Date is so it's the 21st of it's Sunday 21st okay lovely okay so OCCAMS razor Occam's razor so this is something uh, I try to watch educational things and often when people are trying to convey a point they often reference Occam's razor. I don't know how to pronounce it, but they pronounce it. They reference it all the time. They're like, "Oh, I'm using uh, Occam's razor as if it's like a technique, like using a using a hammer or using a screwdriver." They're like, when we use this screwdriver to fix this problem, we get this result. So it's a common technique people seem to use for problem solving, figuring out if they're trying to make a sense of a situation. I've been studying, <laughs> been studying a lot of uh, murder tapes, the interview tapes afterwards where the, the the interrogation of the subject um, and they use all sorts of techniques like uh, long pauses and long stares and moving closer to the person being interviewed to create tension and all this stuff and you've probably heard like good cop bad cop like that but all the different varieties of it and so on. okay so Occam's razor 
Let's have a little. So here's what it is exactly. It's a noun, apparently. The principal attributed to William Ockham, that's O-C-C-A-M, that is explaining a thing no more assumptions should be made than are necessary. The principle is often evoked to defend reductionism or normalism. Nor Normanism. N O R M I N A L S I M. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Alright. So, uh, let's see what else you have to say. Occam's razor is a law of. Pals a law of pasomim. P A R S I M O M Y. Parasomimi is the problem solving principle that. Entries, sh entities should not be multiplied without necess necessity. Fucking hell. Right, we're going to have to get someone to dumb this down for me, because I still don't really understand. Uh, here's another example. This by examples, udictionary.com says, the last one reference was Wikipedia there. Some examples of Occam's razor include following, the following. One of the fence posts is broken. So it's one fence post and it's broken. Okay. Brilliant. That's fine. Let's keep going. Of possible explanations. A. An albino mouse lost on its quest for its squirrel best friend crashed through the fence in despair. Or B. An old nail rusted through. B is more likely the answer. Okay. So I guess it's possibly look for the simplest answer. Um, okay, Oxham Razor or Oham's Razor. This is uh, Wikipedia again. Simple Wikipedia is the principle of philosophy. Is a principle of philosophy. S suppose there exist two explanations for an occurrence. Another way of saying it is that the more a s Assumptions you have to make assumptions you have to make the more unlikely an explanation. Okay. Another way of saying it is that the more assumptions you have to make, the more unlikely it is for an explanation. Alright. Uh, yeah. Alright. Why do they call it Occam's razor? Okay, what is Occam's razor in philosophy? I'm just reading these because they're it's the same thing described in different ways. And I personally find from learning, if you explain something to someone in multiple different ways, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. Because um, if you already know something, you can leave out a lot of the details because you kind of assume that they know certain things when when you assume you make an ass out of me and you or you and me, one of them ones. Alcum's Razor is the principle of parmoniously, P-A-R-S-I-M-O-N-E-Y, or simplicity according to which... The simpler theory is more likely to be true. Alcum did not invent this principle. It is found in Aristotle, Aquarius, and other philosophers. Alcum read. Wonderful. Make sure you hit up that on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all the time. <laughs> Hats, merch, all the things. You'll love it. Today's episode was on Alcum's Razor with Lil... No, it wasn't. It was on that refugee thing. Um, so take care of yourselves. Um, be nice to each other in the comments. And... Yeah, just st stay... Stay... Stay things. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, any other little bits? How's Alcum's Razor used? That's the end of the podcast. It's the end of a podcast. What is an AS? Let's just get the definition for asylum seeker just before we go. I believe it's something like when...
their life is under threat in a different country or something. I don't know if we'll have time to look into this. Uh, what is an asylum? Asylum Seeker, wonderful. So let's just have a little look at Asylum Seeker, just in case there's any confusion, because I'm personally I'm a bit confused. Um, just because I've never looked it up, like, I've heard people talk about it, but I've never really just been like, oh, so that's the definition. Okay, here we go. Asylum Seeker. An Asylum Seeker is a person who file, fle fled, their fled, F-L-E-D, their home because of a war or other factors harming them or their family enters another country with a, and applies for asylum, i.e. international protection. In this other country, in this other country, the asylum seeker is an immigrant who was affected by forced displacement and may become considered a refugee. The terms, asyl term asylum seekers and refugee are often confused. Okay, so I'm, I'm, oh, fuck. Yeah, oh, oh geez. Alright, I thought it was, okay, here we go. Uh, a person becomes an asylum seeker by making a formal application for the right to remain in another country and keeps the status until the application has been concluded. The relevant immigration authorities of the country of asylum determine whether the asylum seeker will be granted protection and become officially recognised refugee or whether asylum will be refused to the asylum seeker becomes an illegal immigrant who may have asked to leave the country and may be even deported. The asylum seeker may be recognised as a refugee and even refugee status in the person's circumstances fall into the definition of refugee according to the 1951 refugee convention and other refugee laws such as the European Convention of Human Rights if the asylum is claimed within the e European Union whoever signatories to refuse the convention create their own policies for assessing the protection status of asylum seekers and the proportion of asylum applicants who are accepted or rejected varies each year from a country from country to country north america English in term asli that's a s y l e e is also used as asai can either be an asylum seeker as defined above in person or whose claim for asylum was accepted by asylum was granted on average about one million people apply for asylum every year holy fuck all right we'll leave it there I hope you, oh Jesus, I kind of just, it's all in there somewhere, the answers are all in there somewhere, have a great day, over and out, being seen podcast, bye 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 bye, all the merch.